Hello, Taylor. How are you? Hello. I am doing wonderful. How are you? I am great. Thank you. So funny story, how we started recording this episode on different, a different topic when it's September, September 21st, I looked back. Oh my gosh. Almost a year and ago. Almost a year ago. And the computer did not save it. So that was hilarious. I was, I was so sure that that podcast was like the best one ever that you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, yes, it I'm didn't gonna... save, but <laughs> It's funny. I mean, like right before we pressed record, we were both talking about how much we grew in those past 10 months. And it is just crazy. So I'm extremely happy to have you back on the podcast now for the relaunch. And (laughs) I wouldn't want to start the relaunch with anybody but you. So I'm very happy that you're here. Oh, I love it. I am so happy to be here. And I'm excited that you thought of me for this. Of course. Thank you. So Before we introduce yourself or before you introduce yourself, let's do some rapid fire questions just so the audience can get to know you as a person before professional. Okay. So night owl or morning person? Morning person for sure. Love that. Coffee or tea? Ooh, that's a hard one. I would have to say coffee just because I can't go without it, but I do love tea too. Perfect. I am the same on that one. Coffee in the morning, tea at night. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Night out or stay in or night out or stay in? Definitely stay in. I am a homebody to the core. (laughs) Same. (laughs) I know we're very similar. (laughs) (laughs) Lavender or peppermint oil? Um, Ooh, I'm going to go with peppermint just for the hair growth properties. Oh, I love that. More on that later. (laughs) Movies or a TV show? TV show, for sure. I have a short attention span. (laughs) (laughs) The beach or the mountains? Uh, Beach. Same. Updo or downdo, just because you're you? (laughs) Um, Definitely updo, even though I don't wear my hair up a lot, but I don't like my hair Mm -hmm. in my face. Updo is my favorite. And right now you kind of have half up and half down. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that. Your hairstyles are always so cute. I love them. It's on camera, I feel like from the back, it, I probably look bald because it's like pulled up. <laughs> I love it. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Lizzie McGuire and how she does her hair differently. And that was my favorite show growing up. Yeah. And she just always had it up and like unique. I mean, she would probably have butterfly clips instead of yeah the clip that you have, but can you please introduce yourself and say, um, explain what got you interested in hair growth and hair health? Yeah, definitely. So I am Taylor Rose. Um, I go by the healthy her, which is H U R on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, all the above, <laughs> um, hair. Uh, so I've always been interested in hair for like, as long as I can remember. Um, when I was young, I had like hair down to my butt. It was, and oh. my mom too. My mom had really long hair and her best friend is a hairdresser. Mm-hmm. So I kind of grew up watching her like cut our hair and I loved experimenting with my hair. I had, you know, every color in the rainbow in my hair <laughs> and my mom, she's like in the finance corporate world. So she's like, I want to go to cosmetology school like that. I was gung ho. I'm going to cosmetology school. And she was like, no, you have to get a business degree you know, because she kind of had a harder upbringing and she's like, this is a good career. It's a stable career. You have to do this. So I was like, well, if I get my business degree, pay for it, get through it, do well, can I then go to cosmetology school? And she was like, okay, yeah, sure. But you're not going to want to. <laughs> and so I, you know, I get through my four year program, got a finance degree, worked in the corporate world for four years and I still hated it. <laughs> and I still mm-hmm. love hair. So through TikTok, I kind of got back into my passion and decided this is, this is what I'm going to do. Like I'm old enough now to choose what I'm going to do with my life. Mm -hmm. I love that you are, uh, what Marie Forleo would say a multi-passionate entrepreneur. And I feel like you really blended like passion and what your degree is in together. And that is so beautiful. Like that is really amazing and very inspirational as well. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. That's a really nice compliment. Of course. Thank you. So (laughs) you sort of blew up on TikTok with the rosemary and how you treated your, you had bald spots by your temples. And am am I correct by saying that, that that was like your main 
blow up on TikTok? I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So what got you started in treating the balding spots? Like what made you lean towards rosemary oil and how was that process for you? Yeah, definitely. So TikTok is actually what got me started using the rosemary oil. And Hmm. at the point I had been dealing with these balding temples since high school and they were getting worse over the years. And, you know, I was doing powders. I was doing different hairstyles to hide it. I was just so (laughs) constantly like on the look, like, okay, can you see anything? Can you see anything? I didn't want to take pictures. And I I think I was trying like a hundred things at a time. And I, it was just like exactly what I tell my clients now not to do. And I wasn't sticking with anything long enough to actually see if it worked or not. And I tried rosemary. It was just, I was trying it with a bunch of other things and I just really liked how it felt on my scalp. And that's what kept me consistent. Like I was like, okay, I don't even care if this grows my hair. I just like how it feels. It's a nice little routine to add in. And then one day I just was looking in the mirror and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have baby hairs. Like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And the only thing I was still doing is rosemary. So (laughs) just, I don't even remember where I first saw it or anything, but it worked. I love that. And it does give that nice tingly sensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My scalp just felt so much cleaner, like using it. So I was like, I don't Mm -hmm. even care if this works or not. It just feels amazing. (laughs) Did you use any other essential oils for hair growth as well, or mainly rosemary? I didn't at the beginning, mainly rosemary. The more Mm -hmm. I kind of delved into that, I started using peppermint a little bit as well, like Mm -hmm. peppermint, Um, but mainly rosemary. Yeah. Awesome. And what did you dilute it with? Ooh, um, it's kind of always different, but my favorite is castor oil for sure. That's one of my favorites too. So what other essential oils would you recommend for hair growth? Rosemary and peppermint, any others, or mainly those two? I would say those two are the main ones to prioritize mm-hmm. because, you know, with, you know, this, uh, that yeah. essential oils are so potent. So it's yeah. like, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to just add totally. in everything you can think of. So I would stick with either just rosemary or rosemary and peppermint. Would you recommend people adding it into their shampoo as well, or waiting until after a shampoo and rubbing it in at night? Or both. I would say I typically recommend the adding it into the shampoo just because I find that people are more consistent that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Love that. And what about anything to help with dandruff? Essential oils, products? What yeah. are your recommendations? Yeah. So tea tree oil is mm-hmm. amazing. I mean, for dry scalp, obviously, if it's like a mild dandruff from dry scalp and just scalp health in general, if you're not looking for hair growth and just want a nice, healthy scalp and that tingly feeling, uh, definitely tea tree oil. And then if you have more of like a fungal dandruff, I would mm-hmm. say there's a shampoo called, I want to say it's called Nizoral anti-dandruff okay. shampoo. Okay. That worked really well when I had a fungal dandruff case a while ago. Perfect. I'll look that up and link it below so people can find it easily. Perfect. 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 I also used to have dandruff as well. And what I use, I use tea tree oil in my shampoo and that helped a ton. And then when I was looking it up, I realized that rosemary oil also helps with dandruff. So that was kind of like a double, a double whammy. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that's, Rosemary oil really does it all. Yeah. I seriously, I will like recommend it to almost every single person. Yeah. <laughs> like, can't. It's just so good. Is there anybody that you wouldn't recommend it to? Um, maybe somebody dealing with like sub, like a subderm or like just an oily scalp overproduction of oil. Um, and it's not that I wouldn't recommend it. It's that I would say address the scalp issue first get it under control before adding in, you know, a stimulating hair growth ingredient that could make whatever scalp issue you have worse. Totally. Yeah. And just to piggyback on top of that, from what I know with aromatherapy and essential oils, people with epilepsy are supposed to avoid rosemary oil as well, but then peppermint oil would be the better alternative. But of course, test it out a little bit before putting it on your scalp. (laughs) Yes. Always spot test. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Um, and to spot test, just apply it to the inside of your wrist. That's a very sensitive area of the skin. So if you're going to react, it would react right there. So next can rosemary oil help treat aloe? I might pronounce this wrong. Sorry. Um, alopecia areata. I know the word, but how do I, I know. I think it's alopecia areata. 
Okay. So I kind of like mumbled through it, but I was like, I think I said it right. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so the question was, can rosemary oil help treat alopecia areata? Correct. Yep. Um, sometimes I would say that is a condition that often corrects itself mm -hmm. without any treatment. And it's also unique in that treatments for it are not more than 70% effective, meaning what works wonders for one case is not going to work at all for another case, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hit or miss on whether, you know, rosemary is going to work. You, mm -hmm. may, you may think it's working, but it's just self-correcting over time. Yeah. Um, but I would definitely say try it because it's not going to make it worse. It's not going to make your hair loss that worse. So mm -hmm. try it. And lowering stress levels is another thing to prioritize here because that stress has an adverse effect on alopecia areata. So that's mm -hmm. a big thing. Totally. And I really feel like lowering stress levels can help with so many different conditions and yeah. just help promote overall general wellness. Agree, but it's, of course it's like so much easier said than done, right? <laughs> totally. It's such an easy thing to say, but then <laughs> apply it to your life and find out how exactly. not easy it is yeah. <laughs> while trying to reduce our stress levels. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like little things, you know, I've been adding in like five minute meditations and you don't think it's going to do anything, but my heart rate goes down so much, you know, I'm like, okay, I really needed that. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. So essential oils for a dead end or broken hair from dyes, what would you recommend? And it doesn't have to be essential oils. It can be hair treatment, a product that you love. Yeah, no, I think oils are great for, you know, restoring hair moisture levels. Um, I would say the best mix would be like an argan oil with maybe tea tree and lavender. So Ooh. Yeah. It'd be like two tablespoons of argan oil to three drops of each of those oils should be enough to cover like the whole scalp and hair. Okay. And then how would people apply that? Would they put it like right on their scalp and then like, and, yeah, you like can, that? depending if you have a dropper, I love a dropper because yes. I fix it in a little bottle and then I just hold it above my scalp and do the drops, or you can just, you know, warm it all up in your hands and kind of run your hands through, coat your ends, mm -hmm. coat your whole hair, and then leave it sit for one to three hours and wash it off. Okay. And you wouldn't recommend having that in your hair overnight and then washing it out in the next morning or I would say that would be okay for your ends, but maybe not okay. your skin as much just because it's kind of a lot to be sitting on your follicles all night. Mm -hmm. I've done that before and it took me three days to get rid of <laughs> yeah. the yeah. greasiness, but I think I used <laughs> coconut oil and that my hair just didn't like as much. Speaking of that, which carrier oil do you think would be best for different hair textures. Okay. Yeah. So like, I love, uh, like a Moroccan oil or an argan oil or a castor oil for more curly, you know, textured hair mm -hmm. for fine hair, maybe like a pumpkin seed oil would be a good okay. one. Okay. Um, and then I don't know how to say, it. I think it's like Jojoba oil. Jojoba oil. Yeah. Jojoba oil. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That one. I never have known how to say that, but that one works really well for my hair and my hair is like pretty flat and limp. So, okay. And it doesn't leave your hair greasy or it anything. Doesn't, like that. It doesn't like the castor oil does a little bit more, but I just find it works so well for like, hair growth purposes that I'm willing mm -hmm. to just deal with it. Yeah. I it actually, I put castor oil on my eyebrows at night too. And, um, you actually recommended this. I use a <laughs> mascara brush and put castor oil on my eyelashes and that's been working. I think like can you tell? <laughs> I can't. That's how I discovered it. That's how I first started was doing that on my eyebrows and they totally filled in. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put this on my hair. <laughs> is what if rosemary is having the opposite effect and I'm losing more hair now? What would you recommend for somebody like that? Definitely. So it's a tricky one because mm -hmm. without, you know, seeing them in person, I don't necessarily know if it's just the beginning, you know, there is a beginning, like a three month period when you're mm -hmm. first starting any hair growth you know, treatment because you have increased pressure from your fingertips. You're manipulating your hair more. You're speeding up the process. You know, at any given time, 14% of your hair is in the telogen phase, which is the resting stage and you're okay. speeding this up. So you're going to notice more of that 14% falling at once. So it could just be this if it's the mm -hmm. first couple of months, or, you know, if you have a scalp issue, like seborrheic dermatitis or any type of inflammatory scalp issue, like I said, you need to be addressing that before you add in a stimulating agent. Mm -hmm. It's just like with minoxidil, you experience that first initial shed, you know, before you get the, the new hair growth coming out.
are there more ways to grow your hair? And this, the person who asked this question <laughs> said, XO, an impatient follower. Uh, I'm always trying to answer everybody, but I swear I get so many DMs these days. I'm like, I'm so mm-hmm. sorry. Guys. Yeah. Um, but yes, there's literally never ending ways to grow your hair. Mm-hmm. So the most important thing to remember is that, you know, everybody's different. Everyone's mm-hmm. hair and scalp is unique. Mm-hmm. So it's really taking the time to research and understand, understand your scalp and hair type mm-hmm. and what, you know, what your scalp and hair needs instead of just blindly following these TikTok trends and things. Totally. What would your top three tips be as far as hair growth? Hair growth. Um, number one, understanding <laughs> your hair and scalp type. Okay. Um, researching and knowing like where to research. So like PubMed is a really good website for researching. You can get like the scientific, the clinical studies, stuff like that. It's not just like Googling, does this work? You know, you actually Mm -hmm. see science behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, yeah, following people who actually know what they're talking about, different trichologists or dermatologists, other hair growth experts, not just people and no, no shame to anyone that isn't certified in something, because a lot of people do know, like I knew most of the stuff I already know before it was a certified trichologist. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure the sources are credible that you're following. Totally. And the last question is my hair is so thin. The top of my hair looks so flat. What can I do? Okay. So this, this hits home for me because <laughs> I have very thin, fine ha- hair. Um, Save the best for us. <laughs> Yeah. This is like, this question hits home. Um, Mm -hmm. so there's, you know, a ton of tricks to hiding thin hair. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually have a crimper. It's a really small little crimper. And I, if you guys are watching this video on Liv's YouTube, I hold the first layer of my hair up and I crimp the hair underneath that against my roots. And it makes it look so much more voluptuous on top. So I'll, I'll actually, I need to post a tutorial of that on my page because it's like night and day game changer. Amazing. (laughs) Amazing. And there's also, you know, there's tons of like hair density powders or volume Mm -hmm. powders. Um, the one I use is by big, sexy hair. It's called Mm -hmm. powder clay. And you just put a little powder in your roots and kind of mess it up. And it does leave your hair feeling a little greasy, but it makes a huge difference for volume. I would trade in a little grease for some volume. I mean, if anyone's watching the video, they're like, Liv, like do those tips she's saying. (laughs) (laughs) I feel you. I'm like teasing my hair, probably damaging the crap out of it. (laughs) Well, I will link both of those below too. So they're easy to find for people. And I will certainly be buying that crimper as well. (laughs) Yeah, I will post the tutorial because it is a game changer. Amazing. Yes. So I know you said it in the beginning, but where can people find you? Uh, TikTok. YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest under the healthy her and her is spelled H U R. Absolutely love the name. It's so creative. It's so you it's her as in you really embody strong feminine energy. And I absolutely love that about you and her as in hair. Love it. (laughs) Thank you. It took me, I was like trying to come up with a new username and I was actually on a vacation with my mom and we were going through so many dumb options and out of nowhere I just was like oh my gosh the healthy herd she's like I love it a million dollar idea I love it (laughs) so thanks to Florida for that one well Taylor thank you so much for being here I am so excited to try these new tips and I know we skipped over a few questions so I'm seeing a part two in the future what about you part two. I'm very excited for it already. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Liv.